Okay, so we are making confidence intervals for P, and my formula for a confidence interval for P is P hat plus or minus E. And we saw the trade off between. We'd like E to be small, but we still want to have confidence, and we've got to balance those things out. Well, it turns out I can control E without giving up confidence if um, I'm willing to take more data. Well, let's remember here that E is S of p hat, oops, I'm sorry, I'm backwards here. Let me try this again. Z that leaves alpha over two in each tail times S of p hat. And S of p hat was the square root of p hat q hat over n. So I could be more like many books here where I said, let's find S of P hat and multiply it by this. They just took this whole expression and shoved it right in here and said this error is the Z score that leaves alpha over two in each tail times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. Same equation, I just replaced S of P hat with this expression, which is equal to S of P hat, and carried it down here. Okay. What I want to show you here is, you know, we don't have a lot of control over P hat and Q hat unless we're doing something shady. These are going to be what they're going to be. Z depends on how much confidence we want, 90%, 95%, 99%. We've got often, we have control over N. Remember what N stands for. N stands for how much data we have taken. So if I keep making N bigger, if N gets bigger, this fraction gets smaller because N's in the denominator. So if n gets bigger, this fraction gets smaller. Square root, still smaller. That's going to make the error smaller. So without changing my level of confidence, I can make my error smaller by making n bigger. Okay. I can even work this out a little bit. And the question that I want to ask now is, if I have a given level of confidence that I'm after, how big do I have to make n in order to get the error level that I'm after? So what I want to do here is rearrange this equation. I want to do some algebra on this equation to try to solve it for n. My end result is going to be an equation that, that I can use to say, hey, how big does n have to be to get a desired error level? So I'm going to repeat that equation up here. E equals the z score that leaves alpha over 2 in each tail times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Remember, ultimately, I want n by itself. One of the first things I'm going to do to help get rid of it, or to help clean this up a little bit, is get that out from underneath a square root sign. I can do that. If I square 
this, but I've got to square the entire right side of the equation. And I've got to square the entire left side of the equation. You learn back in algebra that was kind of OK. Could introduce some trouble if one of these was negative. But there's nothing in here that's negative. My error is always going to be positive. My z-score I always write as positive. These are all positive. I don't have to worry about that algebraically. And what this is going to give me at the moment is e equals, I'm going to have this z-score squared. I square this. And when I square this, if I have the square root of garbage and I square it, I'm just left with this garbage. So again, square root of stuff. When I square it, I just have the stuff. I've got p hat q hat over n. Now, I don't want the n down here. I want it up here. And I don't want this e up here. I want to get rid of it. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to be thorough here and rewrite the entire equation, z. I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room here, though. Nah. Is I am going to multiply, to get this n out of the basement, I want to multiply both sides by n. And to get this e out of here, I want to divide both sides by e. So I'm going to do both in one shot. I'm going to multiply this side by n over e. And that's an OK move as long as I multiply this side. Oops, this should be e squared. Squared that side, squared this side, I should have an e squared here. So multiplying both sides by n over e squared. Multiply this side by n over e squared. Let me try my other blue marker, because I don't think that's showing up real well. And the other marker is no better. OK. Hopefully you can see that, or you're singing along at home with your own piece of scratch paper while we've got this. But my e squareds are going to cancel out here. And my left side is just going to be n. On the right side, the n's cancel. I've got z of alpha over 2 squared times p hat times q hat over e squared. Okay, algebraically, that equation is algebraically the same as this equation. Just rearranged it, I'd get the same results if I plugged in E, Z, P, and Q into here and did a lot of algebra to solve to find N. What I've done here is I've rewritten this in an equivalent but more convenient form for plugging in z, p, q, and e and getting in. All right. So, let's. Suppose we want a 90, I'm going to do something bizarre here, 92% confidence interval. And we want E 
our margin of error to be 1%, which is 0 0.01 when I write it as a decimal. And one mistake people make is putting in E as a percentage in that formula instead of a decimal. E's got to be written as a decimal. Okay. For a 92% confidence interval, the probability of being wrong is 8%, which is 0 0.08. And alpha over 2, then, 0 0.08 over 2 is 0 0.04. So z of alpha over 2 becomes z of 0 0.04. I want the z score that leaves 4% in each tail. So, a little review on how to get that and a picture of what this looks like. I wanted a Z score up here and down here so that this area is 92%, which is 0.92. That's going to make this area 0.46 and this area 0.46. It's going to make my tails have an area of 4% each. And I should shut off my phone before filming. Okay. So the area in the tails is 4% each. And I've got a couple of ways to do that. One way is to go to my Z table and scan it, scan my Z table, looking for the Z score that puts 0 0.96000 in each tail. And I'm looking for 0 0.46000. I get pretty darn close. I can't get it precisely, but I've got something close. I've got 0.45994. That's really darn close to 0.46. And I can see that that happens at a z-score of Let's go 1.75. So again, from 0.46, got close to 0.46, and that happens when I get a z-score at 1.75. So the z-score that leaves 4% in each tail, or 46% in here, is about 1.75. Symmetry on this side, negative 1.75. Okay. The other way I could have gotten this number is I went inverse normal 0 0.04 on my calculator and it's pretty much giving me it's giving me negative 1.751 of course by symmetry that's going to be positive 1.751 so either way I'm going to get a z-score of about 1.75 or 1.751. Your t-table does not have a column that's going to help you out here. So we've had three ways to figure out these critical z-scores. We've had the z-table, we've had the bottom line of the t-table, and we've had inverse normal on the calculator. Any one of those works. That's probably the hardest part of this whole thing is finding that number right there. So what am I going to have for n here? 
I'm going to have 1.751 squared times 0.5 times 0.5 over error I said was 0 0.01. That's going to be squared and we get n of Wow, this is close. I'm getting 7665.0025. Now, even though that's very, very close to 7665, we're always going to round up to the next decimal for reasons I'll explain in a second. So here's how big our sample size has to be. All right. Now, if you make a mistake in the calculations, I've had people because they put 1 for 1% 1 instead of 0 0.01. You should know that 0 0.7666 is not a reasonable number of people to survey. Or number of samples, uh, not a reasonable sample size. Five is not a reasonable sample size. 0 0.32 is not a reasonable sample size. Something between 200 and 10,000. If you make a mistake, it usually is glaring. Think about what you're doing. This is how many data points I have to collect in order to get the desired accuracy. Now, here comes the fuzzy part of this. Before you do your experiment, I didn't even say it on there. Uh, so I just kind of arbitrarily threw these in here without explanation. That was a mistake on my part. But we don't know ahead of time what P hat and Q hat are. We haven't taken our data yet. So if I haven't taken my data, I don't know what P hat and Q hat are going to be. Now, if you already have taken some data, if you've got some survey results, You've got numbers to plug in here that are going to be a good guess for P hat and Q hat. When in doubt, the safest thing to plug in here is 0.5. And the reason is this product never gets bigger than when P and Q are 0.5. So if you plug in 0.5, you're playing it safe. You're possibly making N a little bit too big, which is going to make your error and I lost that equation. It's gonna make the error a little bit smaller than it has to be. That's okay. You were, it's a little bit smaller than you were aiming for. That's erring on the right side. So you've gotta figure out, this equation gives you how much data you have to collect. Now we did a little consulting for people who were working on uh, master's degrees or PhDs in psychology and they wanted 99.9% confidence intervals. They wanted to be really sure. And they wanted teeny, teeny, tiny margin for error. And so it was up to me to tell them, hey, look, I can, we can do this, but you're gonna have to go out and calculate, you're gonna have to go out and collect 45,000 pieces of data. And that's where they learn to compromise on that. How easy or difficult it is, is it to collect your data? If it's dropping thumbtacks and you can have some minimum wage employee drop 500 thumbtacks and repeat that 16 times without going crazy, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. If we're testing can an airplane wing withstand a certain amount of force, it gets kind of expensive if you're out trying to do an experiment where you're going to end up trying to break 7,666 airplane wings. Okay. If you're testing a fertility treatment, you can't just randomly collect data. You're kind of at the mercy of 
how many patients come through your door who are willing to try your experimental treatment. Okay. So there's compromises that have to be made, but this tells you how much data we have to collect in this case to get a 92% confidence interval with a margin of error of 1%.